The argument about rich people being job creators has always been brought forward as an argument about why you ought to cut taxes on them. The argument runs, if you raise taxes, they'll have less money and they'll create fewer jobs. And if you cut taxes, they'll have more money and they'll create more jobs. The idea is don't tax the rich because they create, they're job creators. That's a wonderful thing for rich people to say because the alternative would be to say, don't tax me because I want more money. Mm. Tax somebody else or don't tax anybody, but I don't take my money. That doesn't sound very good. No. You don't want to do that. But if it's a job creator, okay, now let's look at the record to see whether this is anything other than PR, than, than pure Reddit. hustle. All right, let's go. In the 1950s and 60s in the United States, the top income tax bracket on the richest people was 91%. For every dollar over about $75,000 back then, which was a lot of money then, for every dollar over that, you had to give Uncle Sam 91 cents. You kept nine. Why was the tax that high? The answer was we had just gone through the Great Depression and World War II. We had to rebuild a pretty messed up American economy. Everybody had to do his or her share, and the rich people had to pay a bundle of money to do their part. Republicans agreed to that, Democrats agreed to that. The president agreed, that's why it was the law in the 50s and 60s. Even the 1970s, the top tax rate was 71%. What is it today? 39.6%, that's what it is today. And we're supposed to be in an economic recovery. How are we going to well, recover? Here comes the punchline. Yeah. Here comes the punch. We cut the taxes tremendously from the top, 91% to 39 no middle or lower income American has ever gotten a tax cut, anything like that. According to the job creator mythology, if you cut the taxes on the rich like that, we should have had an explosion of job. We right. have worse unemployment than we've had in 25 years in this country. So cutting taxes on the rich, which is what we've been doing, has not produced the full employment, the improved employment, none of it. Because when you cut taxes on rich people, here's a simple way to understand this. All you're doing is giving them more money that they keep. Less to pay in taxes, they have more. And you take it out of circulation. Well, before you even get to that, now the question is, what is the rich man or woman or family, what are they going to do with that money that they don't have to pay in taxes anymore? They may decide to hire people. They may. But they're not required to. There's no guarantee that they will. And in a bad economy, which is what we got, you know what they're deciding to do? To move the money out of the country, to invest it in government loans, because they, they feel safer by lending to governments. The uh, Federal Reserve in the United States estimates that two to three trillion dollars are sitting on the books of wealthy people and corporations, which they're not investing, because as they would explain to you very honestly if you asked them, we're not gonna invest our money when we don't think we can make a profit. So if you cut our taxes, we'll take our money. But we're not going to invest it. We're not going to create jobs, which they're clearly not doing. So the notion, cut taxes on rich people because they're job creators, that's nuts. That hasn't been the case. And, and it makes no sense anyway. The truth of it is, if the government taxed them, which is what Roosevelt did in the 30s, when he helped masses of people with Social Security, unemployment compensation, and a federal jobs program, which is what we had in the 1930s, he taxed rich people. And the, the economic benefit was they were sitting on the money, not spending it. Mm. When he came and taxed it, he turned around and spent it, hired people, gave checks to old people, and that got the economy into a much better shape than it otherwise was. I'm not saying that's the ultimate solution. I think we have to change corporations and how they work in the way I described to you. But it is one heck of a lot better than what we have now and it's part of American history, and we've tried it, and it was more successful than we are now. It is the most amazing thing, not just to me, but to anyone who knows American economic history, that in light of what we did as a nation in the 1930s, creating bottom-up economic stimulus by the social security system, which we never had before, the unemployment compensation, where you get a check every week for a couple of years if you're out of work, and by the federal program, which hired 12 and a half million people, the federal government did. We not only did that and had all kinds of success, millions of American families who had jobs again, who had income again, who could make their mortgage payments so they wouldn't lose their house again, etc. 
We don't even discuss it there. Neither Republicans nor Democrats begin to propose a debate about it. So you have a complete shutting off of our own history at a time of economic suffering. That's the power of the 1% to make sure that they don't even have to fight a debate about doing that. They can keep it off the agenda and out of people's minds altogether. Mm 